What's up everybody, you're watching Model Aviator, I'm Adam, and this week we're reviewing a brand new sport jet from FMS. This is the 80mm Integral. This airplane was designed by FMS in conjunction with Tomahawk Aviation in Germany. The first Integrals were actually composite turbines, rather large ones to be quite honest, and now FMS brings a foam version to market. We'll get started by showing you how this thing goes together. The manual does a great job of describing the assembly. It is quick and it's glueless. There's very few parts overall. They'll start you with the main wing. There's a single composite spar and an automatic plug that plugs everything in when you slide the wing in place. Then you'll use two screws per wing to tighten the wing down. Next you'll move to the horizontal. You plug your two elevator servos in, stow the wires away. You'll use three screws to tighten down the horizontal. Now you'll bring in the vertical, plug in your rudder servo, stow that wire away, and you'll tighten the vertical down with three screws as well. And then the nose cone simply snaps into place. At this point, the only thing left to do is install your receiver of choice, install all of your push rods, and adjust the ball links so that everything is centered. Be mindful with the dual elevator servos, not just to center them in the center, but make sure that they are going up and down at the same rate and distance. The Integral has a 41.7 inch wingspan. It's 46.8 inches long. Our example weighs five pounds, 10.6 ounces, ready to fly with our preferred 4,000 six cell pack. It has a 3665 2000 kV motor, a 100 amp ESC, eight 13 gram servos, and it's intended for 4,000 to 5,000 milliamp six cell packs. The Integral is sold as a plug and play, which means you choose whatever radio protocol you'd like to use and install the receiver yourself. Obviously, being a fast jet, you're gonna want a full range receiver. It is sold in two paint schemes, the blue you see here and a red version. It is a six channel airplane out of the box. You have elevator, rudder with a steerable nose wheel, ailerons, flaps, throttle control, and retractable gear. And the gear is high quality. These oleos are CNC machined aluminum and they have trailing link suspension with springs that are actually light enough to do you some good. It is a convenient top loader. It has FMS's battery tray system. A lot of FMS airplanes have that. There's not a ton of room right here, so it can be a little bit fiddly. This is the 4000. You just gotta take your time. Once you get used to it, you can pretty much find the rails and get stuff in there pretty quickly. Worth noting, when we used a 5000, we went with the HRB 5000s. These are the only 5000s we have that are perfectly square, and they are just compact enough, just the right shape, to go in there without having to hack on foam. And given the way the hatch and the front part of the tongue and groove is engineered, I don't know that you can really hack on that very much, to be honest. So just be mindful that you may need compact 5000s if you want to use the higher milliamp batteries. The airframe is reinforced with carbon ribbon throughout, so if you want to get aggressive with it, she's supposed to be able to handle it. When it comes to setup, the manual has a lot of the pertinent information. You have control throw information, push rod placement information, CG information. They don't mention Expo. Expo is a personal preference anyway. And if you're up to a jet like this, you're going to know a little bit about setting up Expo for yourself anyway, I would think. When it comes to flying the airplane with or without a stabilizer, that's a choice a lot of people make. I, I'm hot and cold on it. I use it with some airplanes and not with others. This jet turned out to be a lot like a lot of the Vipers and Futuras that I've flown. It flies fine without stabilization. It flies a good bit better with it. It's just more stable, and I preferred it with it. It did take me a bit to get the aileron gain locked in. I had the aileron throw higher than it needed to be to get a nice, fast, crisp roll rate. I was just making it harder to get a gain setting where it corrected properly but didn't give me that goofy little bump on a point roll which I can't stand that's a sure sign of too much gain turned them down got that sorted airplanes really set up well now grooving and flying really smooth 
Also worth noting, we prefer it on the 4000 versus the 5000. It's just lighter, it feels better. Get about three minutes and then land on the 4000, four minutes and then land on the five. It's certainly flyable on a five and you're gonna see that, we just prefer it on the four. So next up is our full setup page. You can pause that, take a look at what we did to get this thing grooving and flying the way that we preferred. You set yours up like that if you'd like. And then you go into the flying, you're going to see us fly it on the 5000 and the 4000. So check this thing out and we'll see you back here and give you our final thoughts. Getting the integral slope down and establishing slow flight is where I feel the extra weight of the 5000 the most. That said, even with the heavier pack, it has a great climb rate and as you'll see here, it hauls the mail. It's as aerobatic as most popular sport jets. I didn't quite have the gains on the aileron dialed in just yet here. Still a bit of wing wiggle every time I stop at a point during a point roll. It's capable of some pretty aggressive tumbles. Heidi called for a second inverted pass so she could keep it in frame. She's a stickler. Flies pretty good inverted, even with the heavier pack. It doesn't require too much down elevator, but obviously more with the heavier pack than with the lighter one.
not lacking in the power department, that's for sure. This is interesting. This is a little spin, and that was just a byproduct of me holding back elevator and holding it in the stall. Recovery was just simply done by unloading the airframe and releasing my pressure on the elevator. Good information to have. You wouldn't want to do that by mistake, low to the ground. So everything at this point is really good. As you can see, based on the abrupt stop during those rolls, we've got our gains set like we want them. This is our battery of choice. The airplane is really grooving with this setup. slows down better with the ladder pack and that's not to say the airplane doesn't fly good on the 5000 it does it's just better with the ladder pack in our opinion At this point, we've covered most of what we need to cover from a flight characteristic standpoint, so we're just going to let you enjoy this flight. We'll narrate a bit again during the bonus footage.
Here's our stall test. This is clean. And if you hold it in, it will roll all the way on its back. The sooner you let go and let the airframe unload, the better. This is dirty, gear and flaps down. Same story. That was a fairly quick recovery. It dawned on us we didn't do any knife edges or grass hops, so here you go. So there you have it. When you review an airplane like the Integral, you can't do that without touching on the styling. Obviously, the inspiration for the design of the original Integral was a shark, and the original turbine version from Tomahawk Aviation really turned heads. It got a lot of attention, and people had strong feelings about it. Some people really preferred it, some people really didn't. There weren't a ton of people in the middle. May go the same way for the foam version, I don't know. Whether or not somebody prefers this kind of styling is going to be up to the individual for sure, but one thing I can say, anytime a design breaks convention, quite often it's a break from convention in flight characteristics, which means the demands of the pilot are different. You have to learn to deal with some idiosyncrasy that other airplanes in the same category don't have. That is not the case with the Integral. If you've flown Vipers, Avantis, Futuras, stuff like that, there are subtle differences in all those airplanes, but it's clear to you that you're flying a high-performance sport jet. Same here. This airplane's fast, has a great climb rate, it's aerobatic, it's stable. It is what you expect to feel out of a good high-quality sport jet, so there's really nothing to learn as far as a major adjustment from the pilot, and that's going to be a selling point for a lot of people because a lot of people don't mind something that looks different, but they don't want it to fly different. So, high-performance sport jet, this absolutely is, and I think that's a good thing. I do like the wide gear track. You don't have reverse with this airplane. We got kind of a short runway, and if I don't do my part and bring it in just right, I've still got a little speed when I get to the end of the runway. I can just whip this thing around, and because of the wide stance, it just grooves around the turn and comes on back at me without digging a wing in, which is nice. So that's one of the more forgiving aspects of it. And if you can't have reverse, that's the best thing, best thing to have. When it comes to skill level, I don't think that this airplane would be a great first EDF for everyone. It might be a good first one for some. If you're coming off of a trainer, and you have a lot of confidence with the trainer, and for some reason you have decided that the very next thing you're going to go into is jets, this is probably not the airplane for you. If you have flown a trainer, got confident with that, and you're into an intermediate airplane that's a bit more responsive, maybe a bit faster, you're probably not going to have any trouble going into something like a Viper or an Avanti or an Integral. It's an airplane that can fit that bill. The only thing, we said this in the narration when we flew it, that you have to kind of watch out for, if you are a bit late and you really hold this thing into a stall, 
it is nasty and it takes some altitude to recover from that but the whole point of taking any airplane up and testing it is to see what it does when you do that and to be fair a lot of airplanes if you're not quick on the draw to recover from the stall get nasty the longer you hold them in it so just keep that in mind with the integral learn what it does up high and you know don't do that low <laughs> just like you would with any other airplane when it comes to price point, FMS wants $399.99 for the Integral. That is pretty much the going rate there and up for a high performance 80 millimeter airplane of the sport and sometimes scale type. We think given the quality of this airplane, that's absolutely a fair price. And if you decide that you would like to add a very unique piece to your hangar, we'll put a link in the description where you can do just that. When you go through that link, it supports our channel. When you do that, we appreciate it. Thank you. That is it for us. This is an interesting airplane. Certainly a good flyer. We had a great time flying it. Take care of yourselves. Happy flying. We'll see you next week with something cool with wings.